Please listen. There are three levels of authority that God gives men in this kingdom. The first level of authority is authority over things. When God elevates you and finds you faithful, he honors you and grants you authority over things. Things like money, resources, and all of those kinds of things. The second level of authority is authority over people. Not people in terms of subjugation. Let me say nations. He grants you authority over nations. It is a higher level of authority. So you're not talking of having money. You're not talking of having cars and houses. That is a very elementary spiritual level. The highest level of authority God can give a man is authority over his program. That God can trust you, not just with authority over things, not just with authority over nations, but authority over his program. That means God can say the next move depends on you. Are we together? Yes. There are men that before God will do things on earth, he does not come to inform them. He comes to consult with them. Not as though he is weak. They have transited through understanding to these levels of authority. He said, shall I hide this from Abraham? Abraham was not just his servant. Abraham was his friend. Now we live in a world where when you are rich, when you have money, when you have all of things, we feel that we have achieved the zenith of spiritual maturity. Why? Because my faith could buy a car. My faith could buy a house. I'm informing you by the integrity of scripture that if that is the basis, the credential for your measuring spiritual maturity, you are at a very elementary level. The weight of your physical house, your physical cash, your physical car, it counts very little in the realm of the spirit. Remember the parable of the five talents. What was the first gift he gave them? Talents. What was the second gift he gave them? Authority over nations. You have been faithful in this. Now I trust you with authority over kingdoms and nations. But the highest level of trust is trust over his program. That is the kind of authority that people like Anna the prophetess carried. They didn't seem to have houses so you would think they were weak people. But Anna the prophetess literally prayed salvation to come. When Jesus appeared, she didn't say, I'm seeing a child. He says, now I can find rest. I have seen the consolation. It has arrived. So when you see, I'm trying to redefine your understanding because we have a generation sadly that has been a perverted as far as our idea of success and achievement is concerned. What will make a man that God has honored globally to come and it's, it, if he had gathered people maybe in their 30s, 40s, 50s, it would seem to make a lot of economic sense. But what will you do with people to, you know, these very little children, some of them here, and then to pour out his life? We need to learn to redefine the things that bring joy to the heart of the Father at his expense. You will look at these ones now and think they amount to nothing until you see what the power of God can do in the life of a yielded vessel. Hallelujah. So I just wanted to say a word on that as a challenge to us. People brag around and say, I am a millionaire, I'm a billionaire. All that is nonsense. The only value that anything you have gets is how it participates in supporting the program of God and the agenda of the Spirit. If you say you are a billionaire, it's not enough for the realm of the Spirit to clap for you. What has the billion done with respect to souls, with respect to transformation, with respect to remolding destinies? In the seminary, we used to sing the song that says, Thus will we pass from the earth and its toiling. It says, Only to be remembered by what we have done. No man's money has gone to the grave with him. No man's talent, in fact, has gone to the grave with him. Hallelujah. 
So this is a call for someone. You are about to give an excuse and say, I cannot sing. You may not be able to sing, but if you get three people within your care, three young ladies who are roaming around in a visionless way and put some level of order in their lives and help them to become better wives, help them to become better people, we make impact one life at a time. The idea of wanting to change the world has deceived many people to the extent that they are not changed themselves. You change the world by changing one person at a time. Let your life be a minus one to the kingdom of darkness that because God prospered me, someone went to school. Because God prospered me, someone came to church. Because God lifted me, someone got a job. Are we together now? Because God granted me influence, somebody came to know the Lord. Because I had an encounter with Jesus, he helped me to raise three other apostles, four other people. That is the testimony and the pride of the believer. We need to trust God for grace to get away from some of these mundane credentials that we bring and pride ourselves around. I am a great man based on what? I have an estate. Congratulations, we do not downplay that sacrifice. But what else? Estates don't talk. Estates are not, they, they, they don't, they, in themselves, they don't transform men except they are used intentionally as tools while you're standing i want you to pray one prayer from the depth of your heart lord if you're changing someone in this city don't do it without me don't do it without me lord if you're lifting Someone in this nation Don't do it without me Don't do it without me Lord, if you're blessing Someone in this nation Don't do it without me Don't do it without me So take my heart Yeshua, Hamashiach, Omina Nakashiach, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Sing it one more time. Lord, we obtain grace tonight to become and to remain relevant in your program. That every time you seek for a people, we declare that we are available. And for some of us, we declare that we are still available. In the name of Jesus, bless our hearts tonight by your word and let Jesus be glorified. For in Jesus' matchless name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated if you can.